So one thing that I think is always important to remind my clients and the people that you know I work with is that products are not the end all be all. Like there's no silver bullet, right? It's a system. Right. And so guys like you are out there experimenting with ways of putting different products that are all like standalone on their own supposedly. So says the companies that make them. Right. And then combining them into a system that is better than any one of them, right? Because like the group is stronger. That's exactly the, right. And, and that said, um, if you use a zip system, when you're taping seams or you're flashing, you need to stay with the zip tape because it was designed for this system. You've got, you've got a little bit more texture here on the surface, so it was designed to meet that, okay? Now that you've done that and you've got their tape doing that stuff, there's other things that you could do to a window opening. One of the things I've seen in the field that's kind of up to the contractors, how do I pad the window out or buck it out? Mm -hmm. So if I'm putting in a drainage plane or I've got brick, and things like that, you want to pull the window out, it's kind of up to them to decide how to do it. And so as I've played around in here and as we saw the nail sealability on that material over there, you look at that attribute and say, wow, that's, that's fantastic. So that would make a great way to buck out a window. So I just ripped some down to two inches and put it around the window. So when I set this window, all the nails that go through that material are going to be sealed. It also has screw and nail holding the same as OSB. So you're not going to lose anything there as far as the structure of the window as it's set. Now, what else can I do? You know, I build in little dams. You could do that. You could do this Ooh, with, a, that's with interesting. A, a tape. That's this stuff right here, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So it's this corner bead that's just a solid piece of plastic with a but but this you like built a new hem you like yeah I just cut it. this back a little bit because oh, I want to stick it up just make yeah. a make a little hem basically you're making a pan to the window and and just think this is this is going to get a lot of water maybe it is maybe it isn't but just think this is going to get a lot of water hmm. just think that it is and so you're so what am I going to do to kind of yeah. capture all that water. So yours, like I had the same problem when we built our house. You end up with these little places up at the front yeah. that are going to be a dam where like the zip or the sheathing we used force field is a little bit higher because mm -hmm. it wasn't cut back enough. And then you put it in there and you're like, oh man. So anyway, this, it doesn't matter yeah. if water pools in here. It doesn't as long matter as if water pools your in there. On. Set your window up a little bit. You know, you're yeah. going to want to shim it up so you can get it level and all that. You don't want your window sitting in there anyway. Yeah, let water build up as long as it can dry out. Now here's an interesting material. To put at the bottom. This is actually a wick. So yeah, if your water comes up in there, this is gonna wick it out. It's gonna pull the water out. What is this for? What, where'd you get this? Is this, this like- is a, This is a, again, a weather block. Okay. Um, I love this company. They're a great company from up north. They really think it's a small company and they really think about- Yeah, you can do that at small companies, right? Small you companies can, think can more do creatively. that. Yeah, and they've just come up with some great products. What I did love they this one because this for? Because if you wick your water out, what it also does is it blocks the air from coming up in there. So when you think about, I want to set a window, when the manufacturer says tape all around, except for the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then you're you just letting with... air come in here. So yeah. this does two things for you. Wicks water out, keeps air from coming in. Great product. I would recommend that. And any... That's super cool. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Also gaskets. So when the manufacturers will say, uh, uh, some of them will say on their installation instructions to put a bead of silicone, yeah. set the window, and then tape it. What I found is you set that bead of silicone first, it's messy. You get it on your hands, then you go grab, grab a window, window. Yeah. you put it in there, and you got, the, you got the silicone all over the window. Now you got to clean that up. Two, you got all those nail holes, that silicone's squeezes through the nail holes. You got to put nails through all that. When you try to tape over that silicone, not all tapes and silicone are compatible. So you may not get a good bond there. So what else can you do besides silicone? Gaskets. Gaskets are a great idea. Is this automotive gasket? I find automotive stuff is like I, I, great for that. This is for building. Is right it? Here. Okay, yeah. cool. You know, is this also weather block then? This is weather block. I got this gasket. I'm going to check for, this company out now. They make gaskets for the foundation. So this is all part of air tightness too, yeah. you know, and they think about that. So you got a good, you'll see a lot around here. I'm going to see a lot of guys around here. They sell this and they use this really thin 
material between the foundation and the framing. Yeah. And it's not really providing much for air. Just the sill gasket. It's like yeah. a little plastic see-through thing almost. Yeah. 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 So weather block makes one that's a good quarter of an inch thick mm. so that it's actually going to make a good air seal there. And as you're building tighter houses, that becomes important because if you build a tight house and you got moisture laden air coming through cracks in the foundation. And ants. Yeah. This little detail right here. And this is what I'm seeing in multifamily where they extend the slab out and they will bring the force field right down and the wall right down to the slab. In the field, I'm seeing them put the panel right onto the concrete, which is bad. So we've raised it up here, but we're looking at now, what can you do to seal that? Because if you put brick here and you're building brick up, that's a wet pocket right there. So that's a critical area. So we're just looking at different. Here's one with just tape. So we could put a tape down there, tape it up. Here we've used fluid applied, just like a caulking. So just stick it in there with the fluid applied. And then here we've got the fluid applied and we put a plastic corner material. I don't know if you're familiar with this, if you've used the corner sure. material yeah. in your house. So we're using it here and then we just taped it to the, taped it to the force field and used the fluid applied on the concrete. And then here we just used the fluid applied both on the wall, the concrete, and we've got the, the, the plastic in there. And so to test it, we take a pressure washer. All right. <laughs> and you spend all day out here or just a couple hours or just a It doesn't take long. If it's gonna leak, that pressure washer, it will leak immediately. Wow. Yes, huh. it will come through. So we got a little one little section over there that we didn't do anything to. So there's a the control. Huh. So you can go over there and you start spraying. Somebody's on the other side of the wall, they'll see water come through immediately. Yeah. And then out of these other sections right here, I think this one right here maybe had a little bit of water. It's the same with the windows. You know, we sprayed the windows with the pressure washer. Two kinds of um, uh, liquid applied flashes, a silicone base and a polyurethane base. What we're seeing is with the silicone base is that the tape won't adhere to the surface as well as it will the polyurethane. So an example would be if you set a window in here and you tape the window, the tape's not gonna stick to the silicone base. So we prefer to use the polyurethane base because the tape will stick to it. Hmm. But I've tested this, you know, I could test, I could set a window on this, I could put a piece of plastic on the back, I could take my shop vac, tape it to the plastic, cut a little hole in it, I could pull a pressure, I could take my manometer, I could measure what that pressure is, I could set a spray head in front of it, I could take a water hose and spray. And Landis is saying you could, but he actually does this. And he did it to our house. Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you With can see the video. With a water hose while you're doing a blower door. So pull a pressure, measure what your pressure is, Water spray, you could measure what your water spray is. I mean, you know, of course, ASTM is going to tell you what it needs to be. And really, the, the, a guy like Landis is the guy to do this because uh, guys in construction are always building jigs, which are not things that you're like proud of and want to show your friends. They're things to help you build other things. And so yeah. like building a jig to contain a little fan so you can pull on it with your or with a vacuum or whatever, yeah. like that's exactly what you're doing yeah. in here all day long. Exactly. So, so okay, now you explain to me, and we're gonna talk more about WRBs, like I said, in another video, but Zip is, th this, the green stuff, is craft paper that's impregnated with resin, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so he's gonna show us another thing. Will you show us this thing over here? Come, come on this side if you would. Yeah, this, you know, this is an idea. I dare anybody out there in the manufacturing world to take it and run with it. Um, we all know that drainage is important in building. And so you could build in a drainage plane like you and I did, taking strips and put up and do that. Well, here's a product that it's built in. It's corrugated cardboard craft paper. Craft paper, exactly okay. the same thing as if it's Exactly okay. the same thing. You can, it's, but it's stiff. Mm -hmm. Okay, see how I got it in this overhang right here? Now I've done this on this, this uh, recycle board. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that as a, a sheathing, but it could be done on OSB because it's not vapor permeable. It's not vapor permeable. And by the way, we, they use crap like cardboard 
to build houses with right now. We, we yeah. were just at IBHS and that video I'm linking on screen now where it's like they're testing how well that does. It's rated for its strength when it's dry. So yeah. when you're impregnating this with resin or like coating it with epoxy or whatever it is that you're doing, like the resin makes it not vapor impermeable. It's still vapor permeable when it's got this yeah, kind of it'll Yeah, it'll, it'll be probably in the uh, semi impermeable range. This is. Okay. And permeability is important. I think drying potential is more important than permeability. I think as long as you build in the drying potential where the moisture can build up, you're going to be fine. You know, this, like I said, this is semi-impermeable. This is kind of semi-permeable. They go both work kind of the same way. But if you get liquid water in there and you don't allow it to dry, they'll both rot. Mm -hmm. um, you get up north. Detroit, I've seen OSB and house wrap blow off the side of the house because of moisture buildup in a wall. So if builders have to understand that the products they use can withstand a lot, but like this builder, if you go in the winter time and you close that house up and you turn the heat on and then you pour the concrete in the basement, you're gonna have trouble. Because mm -hmm. you got a lot of water it's got to go somewhere and you forced it out into your wall and it'll condensate there and go through yeah. freeze thaw. And, and they do make machines out. that do that. They're called dehumidifiers. So if you're building airtight, consider putting a dehumidifier in your builds as you go. Yes. Right. There's a lot of things about building a tight house that um, counterintuitive. They're counterintuitive, yeah. you know, and code around here says build on a vented crawl space. I'm like, if you put a zip or force field on a house and you're below three air changes per hour, I would not build on a vented crawl space. Mm -hmm. I would close it up and dehumidify it. Right. So this kind of a thing does exist in like, um, I like how you lapped it. Actually. Well, that was the idea was, okay, well, let's go back to the yeah, issues right. with tapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, uh, you, you lose that kind of lapping with tapes when you just tape on when top of a there. surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. You create that little bit of dam, fish mouth. It could fish be a mouth. problem. So now, how could you do? How could you do that? Let's just say. So it on so when you tape, just to be clear, uh, the tape has a dam on the top, and water can sit right there, right, and just like hang out and maybe try to find its way. Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, so so this is they make mesh. There's like mesh drainage planes that they make. Yes. Yes. And Benjamin Abdon makes a good one. Yeah. But this is a useful way to use, I mean, it's this cardboard. This would be a factory applied. Yeah. You know, and I put these strips on, you got to have a place to nail and be able to seal that up. And uh, also on the edges so you could tape any vertical seams, but all your horizontal seams would then be lapped over. And they kind of lock together because of the corrugation. Like that. And then there would be an adhesive maybe on the back side. Yeah, of I, put some, I put some goop right there. Goop. You know? Okay, cool. Yeah, goop and works. goop it in. <laughs> 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 and, and you're good to go. Cool. And, uh, you know, that would be a, a probably an expensive product. You'd look at it right now, but there's probably some applications. But more ideas, you know, just more ideas are good. Yeah, because the whole playing. thing is evolving. We just keep yeah. on evolving all yep. the time. You could even make a tape, a horizontal tape. Let's just pretend this was, this was a long piece of tape that locked Ooh, in. That, oh, that's pretty smart. Cool. Yeah, yeah right. and, you know, some of the problems with tapes is as you put it in, you're going up and down, up and oh, down. Oh, and this would be like a little and wheel. It's like a little like lock a it in and it yeah. would be perfectly straight. Ooh, I like that. On this one that I did have the tape that I made that taped that seam. I like I, the color on that. I would even and, leave that open as the cladding. If well, it's, my thought was if this, if you made your tape like this, as water's draining down that, it could drain through the tape. So you can see I died. And then I took the tape apart, and sure enough, the water went right through Holy the tape. crap. Wow, that's very interesting. So okay. instead of building a dam with your tape, you actually have drainage. So you got the air tightness and the water tightness underneath this. Right. Yeah, the right. locked so in. There's a, that's very, there's a seam right there. That's pretty cool. And no, no leakage on the seam. Yep. It's all just on the surface. That's, that's pretty cool, Angus. I like that.